Good evening everybody and welcome to tonight's stream. Tonight we are playing some Imperial Assault. You're going to have to bear with me a little bit while I just do some things in the background. Watch that. Yes, as the splash screen denotes, today is Imperial Assault, which is the board game that was rolled last week. Um, I'm not fully set up. It's kind of hard to be fully set up for something like this. Um, let's just throw out here. So, yeah, so we will do a spin, you know, let's, let's change it so you can see my ugly mug. <laughs> um, really, let's adjust that a little bit. That is well off center. Oh, well. Um. So we will um, do a roulette to see which characters I'm going to be playing as today. Um, I need two. Um, this is going to be interesting because I could get ones that just do not go well together. Or I could get ones that work amazing. We will see. That little bit of random element is always fun. Um, the setup still isn't great. I, I wish it were better, but it's not. Um, just kind of have to roll with it. Do, do, do. So first off, just a quick shout out. Um, Atanya and Dino and Zach, or Dino and Zach, thank you very much for the follow. You guys followed while I wasn't on stream. Um, <clears throat> so thank you very much. It's always greatly appreciated. Um, let's go to the wheel decides. Uh, nothing is on. Webcam, please be on. Uh, ignore that. That's just me testing that the wheel works. Um, so. Yes, thank you very much for the follows. It's always greatly appreciated. Um. Fair warning, I haven't played this game in a very long time, so while we'll be doing the tutorial for the app, which is always going to be good, um, I do have the original rule book as well as the rules reference to hand in case I need to look anything up, and I'm bound, I'm sure that is bound to happen. Um, so this is going to be one of the ones that, which we will touch on first. We have kind of made it. <laughs> so, thank you to all of you who have followed, who have watched, and have helped this place grow. Um, but I am now eligible for the affiliate program. I still need to jump through some more hoops before that all becomes a reality. Um, so, don't. So, you can't all start throwing. Um, subs at me not that i'm sure many people i'm not sure that i w i'm worth that but hey we will see um so yeah it's it's all moving ahead which is all good 
This is all great. It's all fantastic. Um, so thank you very much. That does mean I do need to start investing in things for doing the painting streams. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, either way, no, still, thank you very much. It, 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 it's, it's fantastic and wonderful. Um, what that does mean that does mean what that what that does mean that makes no sense whatsoever i cannot talk however thank you very much if you are watching this post live um if you can try and make if it is possible for you to make it live please do why is there an advert at the top of my screen i i this site i might have to trim that down some more Properties. Nope, not properties. Filters. Excuse me. So it's somewhat symmetrical. And uh, that one can be 1350. Oh, 1400. There we go. Done. Just move this over a bit. There we go. So it's right in the back. Slap bang in the center. Great. <coughs> Freaking adverts getting in the way. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yes. If you're watching this post, uh, thank you very much. Um, if you find yourself in a position that you can come and watch live, um, please do, you know, regardless of whether you're watching this post on Twitch or if you're watching this post on YouTube. Um, obviously on YouTube, you've got your, your comment system that you can leave for ripping on my terrible, um, gaming, but if you can, like, make it here and, like, chat and watch me play games badly... And it's even better. We can all laugh at my misfortunes together. <laughs> um, anyway, I probably should stop with the talking and just get on with the working out of the two characters that we will be playing as today. Oh, no, that's the wrong place to click. Click! Okay, so... Shay Levard. Let's pull out the card for Shayla. Ooh, Shayla is somewhere in here. Is that the child of Mandalore? It is. So the first character today that we'll be using, Shayla Vard. She is the daughter of Mandalore. A ranged... Oh no, I think she uses melee. She could use both, actually. She's a Mandalorian, so this is going to be interesting. Um, she was never... She was never used when I used to play this game with um, my mates. I didn't have her at the time, so... Ooh, and Dahlia Pasali. I am going to butcher a lot of these names. And I believe she... Yes. We have Dahlia Pasali. The Hunted Exile. She's a Jedi. Alright, so, at least, at the very least, we now know the two characters we're going to be playing as. So that means I still need to do a lot of things in the background. 
very least, these are now no longer needed and can be returned to the box. What do I have in here? Ah, my health and stamina tokens. I can go off to the side. Ow. Um, so, yeah, the lighting isn't great. I will just say that right off the get-go. Um, ah, that's helpful. <gasps> There's the model for um, Shayla. Kind of hard to see. All right. Anyway, Shayla and... Dahlia, I'm off to the side here. I'm not going to need a lot of those models, I don't think. Ooh, okay. I really should just stop turning and actually turn myself. Alright, so for the very first thing is... Board game with the hat. So this here is going to be rather pink and saturated. I'm still waiting on the cameras for that, so. Um, and hopefully... Oh, don't be too bad. Anyway. Um, so just a very quick thing about this. Um, there are obviously a number of things. Your new game, load game, collections. More, I think more is just like, yeah, it's got the rules, the House of Hall of Legends, that's like your campaign kind of log thing. Um, credits. Uh, the collections is somewhere that's in interesting. It shows you what you have. Um, so I am missing the Heart of the Empire and the um, Tyrants of Lothal, as well as a number of the ally and villain packs as well as the two game mats that you can get. Um, so I don't have a full collection for this. I'm hoping that I can eventually get that. Um, they are still printing these. You demand a special hello. Well, hello there, SSJ Hunter Killer. Why don't you just jump in Discord? <laughs> I just did. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> welcome. Is that like your stream some comments as well? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Ugh, okay. Um, so this game, I do have, for the at least for the base game, I think they only released it for the base game, but Broken Token done a, um, like an organizer for the box, just because it's, exp I, there's so much of this stuff, there's just too much room. Alright. Did you catch who was um, the two heroes we're playing? I'm playing as. Uh, no, I just logged in. Ah, okay. Um, it's Dahlia Pasali, the hunted exile, who's a Jedi. And this one you'll be pleased with. Um, Shayla Varad. She is Her a... name sounds familiar. She is a daughter of Mandalore. Ooh. So... No, that's too high. I really need to just sort out the camera so I don't have to keep moving it. Um, <laughs> nope, that is... Those are not the ones I need. I'm going to be referring back to these boxes quite a bit. Because there are a ton of models. I'm just hoping, actually, that the two characters that I've rolled have actually, um, are actually in the, um, thing. No. In, in the, um, the app. They should be. Uh, no, these are 
freaking troopers. You are not what I want. Alright, back to the game box for you guys. So, a little bit about this game anyway. This game, originally, before they released the app, was a 1 to 5 player game. Um, well, I take that back. It was a 2 to 5 player game. So, one person would play as, if you're playing the campaign anyway, one person would play as the Imperials, while the others would play as the Alliance, or the Rebels. Dirty terrorists. <laughs> the dirty, dirty terrorists. Um, no, you are not what I'm after. Where the fuck is she? Oh, there you are, right? Yes. So we have the two models for my characters. I'm sure I'm going to be needing a lot more of these. I really need more room. <laughs> as, as screwed as that is, I need more <laughs> room. Alright, put those back in the thing for the moment. Oh, dear me. Um, so yeah, so and my experience with this is I've only ever played as an Imperial player. I've never played as um, the Alliance. Um, to be honest, I had more fun playing as Imperial. <laughs> uh, what are these? Really the Damn right you did. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what those are. This is a testament to how long it's been since I've opened this box. Um, what I'm currently looking for is I am looking for the cards that relate to these characters. There's a very good chance I will need these cards that I'm currently looking through at a later point, but right now they're not needed as far as I can tell are these what I'm after? this is what I'm after and they have their characters on the back which is even better, this helps speed things up so rookie, uh, rookie, rookie <laughs> say that five times fast <laughs> I'm not even gonna try <laughs> and then cards with the daughter of Mandalore. Perfecto. What are these? Are these Imperial cards? Yep, they're Imperial cards. These must be Imperials as well. Hmm? Oh no, they're... Allies and shit. Okay. Yeah, some of these might be needed. Oh, these are all status effect cards. These are probably going to be needed. Alright. We'll pull these ones out as well. Okay, I can put those away. I've got no idea whether I actually need them or not. If I do, I can grab them anyway. And they're all my... They're mainly my Imperial cards, I think. I think I'll need the mission tracks and stuff like that. Like the mission cards for picking up the new missions, depending on whether I win or lose. I think the game will dictate that for me. Let's pop those there. Uh, all of the game board pieces, uh, they'll go somewhere. I'll just pop that on there like so. So, um, quick 
a look at the card. These cards are actually double-sided. Um, because when you, essentially, when you die, you don't truly die. When you, like, take enough health damage that's on your front of your card, you flip yourself over and you become wounded. Um, if you, if it happens again, you are retired from the match. Um, you don't actually truly die. Um, you do live to fight another day. So that's how the rebels stayed alive so long. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. I need these. I don't really need these in any particular order, but I do like them to be an XP order. So. They all have their own individual little decks. Uh, these are Dahlia's cards. Um, you always start with one card, which is like your base start, your base w weapon essentially. And for her, she has a plus steel staff. And Shayla has a duelist's blade. Oh, this is going to be fun. I've got two melee characters. God damn it. <laughs> Oh, okay. This could go rather badly. So I'm just gonna drop them over there. Oh, hello. Why, why do I have a pit droid? Whatever. Uh, screw it. You can go over there for now. You're in the way. Grab the boxes. I'll just pop them out the way up here. <laughs> Um, and then s different types of status effects. Weakened, I think this is bleeding. Yep. Stunned. Put the models out the way. Hardened. That was a new one, I think. What the f well, that is a very good question. Where the fuck are my dice? Dice are important to the game. Yeah, yeah, they really are. Oh, I have a feeling they're... S yep, here they are. They're stuffed under these... <laughs> under these, uh things. Come to me, dice. We need you for rolling. What? Another guy named Siddler. Playing some Siv? Yeah, Siv's red. Now that I have the dice, there is a good thing. So, he has dice. Pop them out the way up here. So, new game. I'm gonna do the campaign. So, I don't have anything that I can do the raids with at this particular point in time. We are going to do the tutorial because, as I said, it's been a while since I've played. It's been a very long while. Um, we're just going to overwrite this. Um, have you played any version of Imperial Assault before? We're going to say no um, for the benefit of those that haven't played this. Um, and also because... Fuck me, it's been three years, maybe, since I played. There's only been one person playing, and it's me. So yes, for a solo game, you will control two heroes and follow all rules for a two-hero game. God damn it. Oh, they want me to play as these? Okay. F 
screw that. <laughs> uh, yes, I have. I'm sorry for those of you <coughs> then that haven't played this and that'll have no idea really what's going on. Oh, choose the blonde. Um, unfortunately I can't. The two that I have picked are these two. Well, the two that the, um, Wheel Decide has picked are these two. Wheel of Morality. Turn, turn, turn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have no idea what to call this squad. The Yellow Awesomeness. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I think um, for future streams we will likely do a um, uh, do a poll or something to get a team name or something, or just have people just shout out in the chat what they want. Anyway, for now, we are known as the Yellow Awesomeness. <laughs> From within the secret rebel base on Yavin 4, you listen anxiously as the pilots of red and gold squadrons face down the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star. You cheer with joyful release. Release? Relief! When Luke Skywalker destroys the Imperial installation with a single shot. You stand at grateful attention as Princess Leia Organa presents Skywalker and Han Solo with awards for their ma uh, materius... Materials? For the treasonous affairs. Sure, the materials services service. Yet the ceremony is hardly finished when Rebel Command orders a full evacuation of Yavin 4 base. You help load the transports, uncertain how long you have until the Empire arrives. And this is interesting, because if I remember correctly, uh, the very first campaign that comes out of the box with Imperial Assault happens, uh, runs along the same time as the first movie, and ends at the end. Um, when the, uh, regardless of uh, however it ends, Wherever you go through the story, because it's essentially it's like a choose your own adventure kind of thing. Um, well, you win your own adventure. Um, you end up with, um, it ends with the destruction of the Death Star. So this is kind of picking up right after that, which is, uh, very interesting. Very sad face. Uh, All those credits yeah. wasted. <laughs> Alright. Welcome to boot camp, soldiers. My name is Lieutenant Talcon, and I'm here to teach you what you need to know to do battle against the Empire. I know you all have seen your fair share of action already, but this is a whole new battle you're about to join. If you want to have any hope of bringing down the Empire, you're going to have to learn a new way of doing things. This tutorial will walk you through the um, how to play Star Wars the Imperial Assault Legend of the Alliance. Italicized text is story text, non italicized text is rules and instructional text. How to fight like a rebel. Run in and die gloriously <laughs> for the Empire. <laughs> That's the um the stormtroopers, right? <laughs> um if you need to <laughs> so the rebel should fight too. <laughs> so if I'm wanting to review past messages, you can find them in the message selection down here. Um so it will log my current objective. So we're on round one. Yeah, you can see it's got that there. So the objective is to learn how to play in the Alliance. Okay, your assignment is to patrol the boundary of the base and make sure Imperial troops can't catch us off guard. I will monitor your progress from the command center and keep in contact and keep in contact via comlink. You turn towards the ancient metal gate that leads out of the base into the dense wild jungle beyond. So, I now need to go and find these pieces, which is um 
zero one a eighteen a I need two of those and a door uh, okay this is the one thing about this particular game just the amount of tiles there are That's ten A. Eighteen, eighteen A. I've got one piece. We're off to a start. Is this piece? Damn it. Oh, okay. Well, it's not in there. Is this 18? That's another 18A. So we've got two 18As. That is always good. We're a third of the way there. are not the pieces. Twenty. That's zero two, eh? <laughs> oh man, the thing is, is that I have a feeling a lot of these are procedurally generated, so I could run the campaign like multiple times and get completely different pieces every time that's needed. Yes, welcome, welcome to those of you who are still joining. No, let's not cover the pieces that we actually need. Alright, no. I mean, it's one, of the it's one of the fairly largest pieces. You would have thought it would have been easier to find. Yeah, it was right at the bottom of the bloody box, wasn't it? Okay, so. How does it want us to have this this way? The piece there. Um, yeah, I am aware I do need better lighting, so. And then, we have a door. Um, 
If you cannot see the whole map, you can move the map around by dragging it. You can also zoom in and out of the map. So, yeah. So. Play Stalia Pascal on the indicated space. One player takes the hero sheet and starting weapon. So, we are starting right there. So, I need to kind of keep track of where all of these characters end up. Uh, the app won't do that for me. Also, the same with the Imperial troops, from what I re remember of just quickly going over this. Um, and Shayla Vard, Varad, goes here. And we have the things right here. Just off camera. It's him. Blast him. Suddenly, you catch a glimpse of movement out the corner of your eye. A squad of Imperial Stormtroopers has ambushed you. Uh, deploy three Stormtroopers to the indicated spaces and place a regular Stormtrooper card on the table for reference. Then choose the colour for this group from below. This helps me, um, the, This colour helps you tell multiple groups from the same type of part. Okay, so this is where actually I do need to get into the figures. Looks like I will be needing those cards. Okay. Come on, Stormy boys. Nope. Nope. Well, let me just grab another set. There we go, that works. Alright, I'm probably going to need a lot of these cards, so let's just pop them up out the way out here, shall we? And it was normal stormtroopers. So... These are the Stormtrooper card. We'll just have here. Pop those up there. Just out the way. <laughs> Alright, so these are going to be this group. And that means I need a token for them. You know what? That's fine. Now it will be this group. And they were there, there, and there. Uh, choose the color for the group. This helps. Yeah, okay. The colors below match the stickers provided in your core game. 
Even though this tutorial where, uh, will tell you where to place and move figures at times, this is for demonstration purposes only. During a typical mission, the app does not track where any figures, Rebel or Imperial, are on the map. Uh, this icon represents the group of stormtroopers. The coloured ring around the group matches the colour you picked for the group to help you identify which figures belong to this group. You can select this group icon to find out more information about this group. It's not letting me actually click it until I'm done with this. Blast! How do we not detect them before now? No time to worry about that. You have to get ready for combat. The stormtroopers interrupt to activate. Um, Imperial figures activate in groups. When a group activates... Really? Uh, when a group activates, each figure takes its activation one at a time until all the figures of that group have activated. Then it will be your chance to fight back. Uh, so, this is the Imperial activation window. A group of stormtroopers is active now. So this window will show everything you need to know to activate them. The colored bar indicates which group is active uh, in case there are multiple enemy groups of the same type on the map. So that would be the highlight there. If you select the group's portrait, you can bring up a list of information relating to this group. You can also access this window through the group icon on the right side of the screen. Select the Stormtrooper portrait to continue. So, this window shows any special abilities, uh, special rules for this group, including any abilities on the group's deployment cards that should be ignored. For example, this Stormtrooper group, and all Stormtrooper groups, ignore the squad training ability on its card. For reference, squad training is, while attacking, while adjacent to another friendly trooper, you may re-roll one attack die. Um... That there is mainly for whenever you're playing as an Imperial player. So yeah, when playing the um, Legends of, uh, of the Alliance, all ability on Imperial groups that use the words may or choose are ignored because there is no Imperial player to choose when and if to use them. Select where on the screen... Uh, select anywhere on the screen to close the group window so basically the priority is you get plus two accuracy and then plus one damage so uh, this is the bonus that the group gets during its activation in this case each stormtrooper will apply plus one surge to its attack during this activation I believe that's the surge symbol uh, this bonus may be different um, each time this group activates, so remember to check it each time. Um, Imperial figures act according to a list of orders. One at a time, each figure in the group will perform each of its activation instructions in order, starting from the top. If they cannot perform an order, they will skip and move to the next one. So some activations in um, activation instructions have the icon of an arrow or the weird star and an arrow next to them. An Imperial figure can perform instructions with a combined total of two action icons during its activation. Um, additionally, Imperial figures can perform only one instruction that only perform only one instruction that includes an attack icon, action icon. So that's the attack action. So normally you decide the order the figures in an Imperial group activates, but the purpose of this tutorial, let's start with the highlighted Stormtrooper. The first instruction these Stormtroopers have is 
attack, move three to attack the closest rebel. The first part of this instruction, move three, indicates that the stormtrooper will spend up to three movement points to try and perform the rest of the instruction. When a figure moves to attack, it will spend its movement points to get as close as possible to its target before attacking. Uh, when an Imperial moves, it will take the shortest path to reach its destination. So this Stormtrooper has only one valid space to stop, the highest, uh, the highlighted space. This space is close. Is this space is as close as the Stormtrooper can get to the closest rebel, Dahlia Pasali, or Pasil, 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 with its three movement points. Move the Stormtrooper to the indicated space. So, for the sake of showing, it would be one, two, three, because you can move, as long as there is a connecting point on there, even if it is literally just the corner, you can move diagonally. So, now the Stormtrooper will perform an attack against... The hero it is closest to. Uh, this is Dahlia. Use the Stormtrooper card you place on the table to see which attack die the Stormtrooper rolls. Roll those dice, those dice, one blue, one green, along with Dahlia's defense dice, if any. So yeah, it's a blue dice and a green dice. And Dahlia's defense is white. Ah, that is rather helpful. Let me do that quickly. So, as with any ranged attack, check to see if the Stormtrooper has suffered accuracy to hit. Then the Stormtrooper will spend any surge it's rolled, including the free surge it receives from its bonus. So, on these dice, there are numbers as well as symbols. Um, at least on the attacking dice, which are the blue, the green, the red, and the yellow dice are the attacking ones. The defense dice are the white and the black dice. Um, for an accuracy to hit... You, it all depends on how far away from a model you are. You need to roll the same or higher than the number of spaces you are away from a model to hit the target. Basically, the Stormtrooper's literally just run up point blank, put a gun to my head and pulled the trigger. <laughs> it's not missing. <laughs> so. Um... It will probably go over this, but basically, because it's like right up close and it's not going to miss, it's not going to use the two to the accuracy. It will just gain the um, plus one to damage. Yep. So for each po uh, for each surge the stormtrooper rolled, consult the surge priorities list by uh, selecting the surge priority button. Uh, selecting the button again will close the priority list. So, the Stormtrooper will spend its surge on the topmost surge ability that would have the effect on the attack. In this case, it's the plus two accuracy. Um, since it already has sufficient accuracy to hit its target, the Stormtrooper will skip that ability and apply it to the plus one. Um, another point of reference is, and I think it will mention it now, um, yep. Yeah. Even if the Stormtrooper has two or more uncancelled surges for this attack, um, it will only use one because the Stormtrooper only has one surge ability that it would have any that would have any effect on the attack. Each surge ability can only be used once per attack. 
Uh, finish the attack by placing any damage the hero um, taken on the heroes on the target hero. So I ended up taking uh, three damage. So, it is important to note that even though the Stormtrooper has moved and attacked, it still has, it has still only performed one action during it, its activation. Because the instructions that were performed only had a single action icon. If the instruction is preceded by two action icons, like two moves or attack and move, that instruction takes both the figure's actions and will the only instruction that the enemy can perform for its activation. You know what? Let me turn that, that way, maybe? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Remember, since the Stormtrooper performed an attack, it cannot perform another instruction with an attack because Imperial figures are limited to one attack per activation. Uh, it's slightly different from the heroes. The heroes can use both of their actions to just attack if they so choose. Now this Stormtrooper has one action remaining, so let's see what it will do next. We'll go to the next instruction in the list. Move to, to reposition 4. Let's take a look at the map and see what that means. So... Reposition 4 means that the figure will attempt to move to a space which is the uh, from which the nearest rebel figure is four spaces away. Figures will always attempt to perform this action, even if the figure cannot get four spaces away. The highlighted spaces are all three spaces away from Dahlia, which is the furthest the Stormtrooper can get away from that hero. Note that while these two spaces are three away from Dahlia, they are only two spaces away from Shayla. This Stormtrooper wants to be as close to four spaces away from both Dahlia and Shayla as possible, so it will not move to either of these spaces. These two spaces are three spaces away from Dahlia and at least four spaces away from all other heroes, so these two spaces are equally valid for the Stormtrooper to reposition to. So which one will the Stormtrooper move to? This is the case where the Imperial Rule applies. When there are two or more valid options for an Imperial figure, the players as a group should decide which option is the least beneficial to the heroes and, cho or, and choose that option. This is known as the Imperial Rule. However, there is no time for indecision in combat. So if multiple options are roughly equal in their disadvantage for the heroes, or if the players cannot agree, just pick one at random. In this case, the indicated space is slightly better for the Stormtrooper, because it puts the trooper out of line of sight of the heroes. Move the Stormtrooper to this space. So again, for reference, these red lines basically indicate a block on your line of sight you can't see through red things there's a dotted black line which i think is like partial cover or like a rough terrain so with the red lines you can't pass through them though but this stormtrooper is going back to that spot right there This Stormtrooper has finished his activation, so now the other two will activate. So let's activate this Stormtrooper next. Using the same instruction as the previous one. So his first instruction is move three to attack the closest rebel. This Stormtrooper wants to get as close as possible to the target, so we'll... Oh, wait a minute. I actually completely forgot about the frickin' defense dice that I rolled. I will try and avoid doing this. If I make mistakes again, I will just um, roll with it. But that symbol there 
is like completely is like negate attack if i remember correctly where are my rules references um doop doop do 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 figures. Animation setup. That doesn't matter at this particular point in time. Miss. Yeah, that so that icon is dodge. So it caused the it actually caused the attack to miss, so she actually took no damage. Um But yeah, as I said. In future, if I make that mistake, I make that mistake. I will just roll with it. Uh, so, the stormtrooper wants to get as close as possible to the target, so it'll move to the space. Move the stormtrooper to the space indicated. One, two, three. Now I'm just going to put you down there so you don't keep falling off. So... Now the stormtrooper will attack the closest rebel from the attack as before. Oh wow, look at that. Well, I mean he got two surges, but I did roll the um, dodge again. It's not a loaded dice, I promise. <laughs> um... So in this case, again, he would have got the sur one surge for plus one damage, but no damage was done because she managed to dodge. So, now the stormtrooper has completed the instruction, it is time for its next action. Move two to reposition four. So, this stormtrooper will try to get to a space that is four spaces from the nearest rebel. It cannot do that, but it can get three spaces away. The spaces it can reach are highlighted on the map. Choose the space that seems the least advantageous for the heroes, or pick one at random. Then move the stormtrooper to that space. Uh, going by the rules, it would be this space up here would be the least advantageous. So, finally it is time for the last Stormtrooper to activate. You now have the knowledge you need to activate the last Stormtrooper in this group. If you need to see something on the map, you can use the View Map button below to minimize the Imperial Activation window. Um, select the Activation button that appears to reopen the Activation window. Activate the last Stormtrooper, then select Finish. Alright, so move three. Um, one, two, three. Um, so, very quickly, you friendly models can move through other friendly models with no hindrance to their movement speed. Um, you can move through enemy models, but it does cost you one movement to do so. So, if you're going to move through a model, um, it will cost you one to go in, but then also one to go out as well as the movement to move to the next space. So it would be essentially two movement. Um, however, if there is obviously like a diagonal gap between the two, you can kind of like, you kind of like dodge through them that way. If they're in a line, they f they're forming a, a line. So if that, that it comes into tactics if you want to try and hold off a place. You want to be in a straight line. You don't want to leave any kind of like tiny gaps because they will just, you will just like diagonally shoot through them. Um, another thing is, is the space that I'm currently in with the Stormtrooper. While it is on, um, let me show on the map, view map. So while I am standing in this space here, um, 
and obviously Dahlia is in this space right here, um, and there is like the red through here, so the, the red square denoting that it is like cover, full cover. Um, you actually pick from any corner of the square that the figure is occupying to shoot at any other square that the target is occupying. So for this Stormtrooper, we will be using this corner here, and it's from any point from this corner, as long as I can have a clear line of sight to any other corner that Dahlia is in, for the square that she's in, you have line of sight to take a shot. Uh, so, once again... We are rolling. Let's see what we roll. Okay, so um, it gets one free surge. I rolled three for the range, and the range counts for full squares, so it is like one square, two square, three square. So it hits, so the surge will go on to damage. Um, so there are extra icons here. <laughs> One of them, I think, is a negator point of damage. The other is negator surge. I can't remember which way round it is. Um... Alright, so, I'll show at least on the camera. So, the circle with a line through it is evade, and the other one is block. So, I have been able to negate the surge, so it doesn't get its surge bonus, and I have... Um, blocked one point of the three damage left that it rolled from the dice. So, Dahlia has taken two points of damage. Um, and then the next thing is I need to move two, move two spaces to reposition um, four. Uh... Let's go back here. I think those are correct. It it does ask you uh, like if it does say like oh did you we'll find out here but it'll tell me yeah. All right. Did you move? Uh, did the uh, third stormtrooper end its activations in one of the highlighted spaces? If so, then you got everything right, especially if it ended up behind the wreckage. Now it's time to fight back. Finally, notice, uh, notice that the Stormtrooper portrait on the right-hand side of the screen is tinted red. Um, this indicates that the Stormtrooper group has activated, and it won't be able to activate again until the next round. So it is up to the heroes now. Choose a hero to go first, and then have that hero perform an, ac an activation. Uh, when the activation is complete, select the hero's portrait on the left side of the screen to end the hero's activation. Um, it's a shame that you can't really see, like, the things. Um, hopefully when I get a second camera I can have a, a screen down on here that will show kind of what's going on. Um, so, I am going to... <coughs> Jesus Christ. Bless you. Thank you. Um, so they all have different kind of stats so both of them are melee characters which I did not realise I'm just going to make this very interesting um, ah Dahlia has reach though which means I can attack from one space away um, 
but they've got a speed which is the number of spaces that they can move um, and they've got an um, an endurance amount so basically I can use endurance to activate special abilities um, so we are going to go um, gonna use uh, Dahlia so we are going to uh, first off we are going to move one two now the interesting thing with the heroes and it hasn't told me that i can't do this on the app so i'm assuming that the rule is the same you can declare a move a, um a move move part of your movement attack and then finish your movement so basically when you say i'm going to move you don't move that full speed you get speed points added to your movement pool and it allows you to just take that movement so we're going to do two movement um then i am going to attack with my plasteel staff um i am going to use I'm going to activate, I'm going to use two endurance to activate her ability precise strike uh, which is when you declare an attack with a melee weapon choose one, choose and remove one die from the target's defense pool limited to once per activation so she attacks with a green and a yellow dice Um, and normally the Stormtrooper would have a black dice for its activation. Um, but in this instance it does not. Okay, so, um, I rolled a two for the range, that it doesn't really matter, I'm right up close anyway, um, and also I rolled a surge. Um, so I only got two damage, so it, necess it wouldn't actually kill that figure, but the surge I'm going to use is I'm going to allow to increase... I'm going to increase my damage by one, so it's three damage. Stormtrooper figures have three damage. So that Stormtrooper is dead. Um, I then have two more movement points. Um, I am going to Where am I going to go? That's a very good question. I'm going to move to in front of this stormtrooper. Uh, and it said to click this portrait once done. Yes. So, did you manage to take out those stormtroopers? No? Well, keep at it. And when you do, be sure to inform the app. 
When an Imperial group is defeated, select its icon on the right hand side of the screen and select the check mark. It is important to do this as a group uh, as the as soon as the group is defeated, or else the app might choose a defeated group to be the next Imperial group to activate. So, you may have noticed that each hero has two portraits on the left hand side of the screen. Each portrait represents one hero activation for the round. Each time a hero performs an activation, one of its portraits will be shaded blue. A hero cannot take its second activation until the other hero has taken its first. After that happens, the coloured portrait will be moved to the top and that hero will be, able, will be eligible to activate again. Um, so that there is just for whenever there is one person playing, or for when there is one, or... I think one or two people playing. Um, when, obviously, there's one person playing, I'm controlling both of those heroes and both of their activations. If it was a two-player game, it would be... Um, one person would control one hero, the other person would control the other. In a three-player game, it is randomly decided each round who gets the extra activation. Um, and uh, at least in this one, I think it is probably going to be randomly decide. it's decided in like a normal tabletop where you're playing with um, an Imperial player as well. The heroes can decide who gets the first activation because it can really change the flow of the game if you're trying to escape you could have someone like do a double run if they're like too far back or you've got a, someone who wants to go in and do a lot of hitting on things you can have them go in and just like beat down on the imperials and stuff like that so it's kind of tactical in that sense um, and then in a four player game there's no real need for that because you're just going to have four separate heroes and that might be something that I might end up doing. I might end up doing that we'll make um, a squad of four or something. I control all four separate characters or something like that. I mean, that could be interesting. So. Also note that each hero has a plus ten next to the portraits. This indicates that each hero has ten extra health for this mission. Because the app tracks a hero's extra health and activations gained when playing with fewer than four heroes, you should not use the heroic and legendary reward cards when playing an app campaign. So yeah, there are like certain reward cards, certain cards that you can use in the game here, which like allow, which gives you like it says like oh you get an extra turn and you get plus ten HP. Um, I think that's for the legendary. For the heroic, it's you get plus 5 HP. Um, because there are three players. The sound of your conlings um, beeping shakes you from your state of surprise at having been ambushed. Take out those stormtroopers, Lieutenant Talcon orders. Continue to prom hero activations until the stormtrooper group is defeated. Alright, so, now we have um, Shayla Varad. Uh, choose a small hostile figure within three spaces and in line of sight. Push that figure up to three spaces to a space adjacent to you. Then perform an attack with a melee weapon targeting that figure. Well, there isn't anyone that fits that bill, so I am going to issue a move, which gives me five movement. Uh, one, two, three. Um, and then... I will attack again, I think. Yep, that is a green and yellow. 
for the blade. And this time I cannot remove the defense dice. So... This stormtrooper does get a chance to defend against the attack. Okay, so... We got one defense from well, one block from the black die for the stormtroopers, so that kind of neg that negates that point of damage. Um, but I did get two surges. Now, the first surge point that I can use, well, that I'm going to use, is to add one point of damage. Uh, the second one, I have pierce one. Now, Pierce allows a figure to block a number of the block, or to ignore a number of the block results on a dice. So the example is Pierce 2 allows you to ignore two, blo uh, two block icons. It's Pierce 1, so I that uh, counts as if it doesn't count, so two points of damage to that Imperial figure. Uh... And we will do that. And that is Shayla's activation. Okay, so they are we are now in melee combat range with both of them, so we are literally just going to. Um, attack normally so I'm going to do Dahlia again I'm not going to bother with the um, precise strike this time around so let us roll ooh Ooh, that is not good. Okay. Probably should have. Never mind. Um, I rolled two damage and one surge, but they rolled two block. So only one point of damage was done this time around. Um... I am going to attack again. I'm not going to use precise strike. Okay, so that was a better attack. I done four damage, but it rolled the dodge, so it negates one, which is takes it to three, but it still kills it because it already it would have died anyway from that one attack. Alright, so that is Dahlia's activation. Remember to defeat the Stormtrooper group in the app. If you have defeated them on the map, make sure to do this before the end of the activation in which the group's defeated. Yep, yep, yep. We know, we know. Um, so. I am going to attack again and... Why not? I'm going to use the ability of the Duelist Blade. It allows me, if I use another activation, I can replace my yellow dice for a red dice. Which is the highest damage, highest attacking, attack damaging dice that you can get. So let's go with that and see what happens. Ooh! Ooh, you bastard! So, it rolled the three blocks. Um, oh man, that sucks. 
<laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> Indeed, thank you. Yeah, that is, like, insanely unlucky. Oh, uh, so, it doesn't matter what I do. Um, the surge that I rolled... If I put it into the point of damage, it would just be blocked by all the damage. If I put it into the point of pierce... I don't think it overrides it. I think... Because there are three blocks... Does it? Does pierce overwrite? Yeah, it's one of those weird ones. Especially if you roll more block than you roll for pierce. I think you just ignore... I think the damage just ignores whatever is blocked and it would still go through. I think. It's one of those really ambiguous ones. Yeah, it would still have two blocks. That's what I thought. Yeah, if, oh, yeah, no, so it, it doesn't actually, it, 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 not, it just removes one of the blocks, so, it, yeah, you have, my pierce would have to be, um, three or more for it to go through, so, yes, thank you. So, yes, um, it failed to kill it, and obviously I used both of my activations for that, or both of my, um, moves for that activation. Okay, so, this is interesting. Minor Peril. The oppressive jungle heats, sap, um, heats saps your strength. Each hero suffers one um, endurance. This is a peril effect. You will encounter effects like this at various points during the mission. The longer you take to complete a mission, the worse the effects will be. Okay. Round two. Oh, wait, no, no, I, I know about the dodge. Um, I've already rolled it twice as Dahlia. Um, so, that I, I know of the power of the dodge, and that was a bane of my existence whenever I was um, playing as an Imperial player many years back with um, a group of friends. <laughs> uh so even though the stormtroopers um, interrupted to go first, last round, the heroes normally get to activate first in each round. Choose and activate a hero now. So... I am just going to do a normal attack. I'm going to choose um, Shayla this time. Actually, no, I take that back. I'm not going to choose Shayla. I'm going to go as... Dahlia first, and I'm going to rest twice. Now, rest, you get back... You heal equal to your endurance number. Well, you get, you get your... You basically heal your endurance. You, like, get rid of your fatigue, essentially. Um, up to your endurance number. So for Dahlia, it's five. And then if you have more... Endurance. If you have any health damage over what your endurance left over, you can recover health. I, I butchered how to say that. Um, yeah, anything over is health. So, recovering the three stamina... Um, and then I recover two points of health. Um, I'll then use move, as I've only done one rest. And I will move back here, so if I need uh, one, 
two, three. Yeah, we'll go three to here. So I'm closer to the door. Do you just sit still, please, board? Um, then, shh, and then that's the activation. Oh, I just realized then there's something I've done. Okay. So, Stormtrooper Squad. So, there's only one figure left. Um, so. Uh, the squad so it, the bonus it gains then is squad training gain pierce one for each other figure in this group well it's not going to gain any pierce because there are no other figures um so for this move three to attack the healthy rebel that has suffered the least damage well it will just be attacking Shayla right in front of me there. So it's a blue and green. And she gets to roll black. Alright, so it doesn't get surge, so that's fine. I block two points of damage. So I take one damage. Uh, then it moves to to reposition four. Um, the best place it can go to is there. Okay, so. Uh, let's say is that well one yeah one two three I can't use the Mandalore whip so I'm gonna activate move one two um, and then go in for the attack uh, this time we have um, one defense but two surges so we'll put one damage and one pierce Um, killing the unit. Huzzah! Um, defeat stormtroopers. Yes. Um, good work taking out those bucket heads. I'm starting to believe the stories I heard about your past exploits. You have just earned fame. Fame is a measure of how well you are known across the galaxy. The higher your fame, the more resources the Rebel Alliance will provide you. But the more effort the Empire will put into taking you out. Fame is earned primarily by defeating enemy groups, achieving mission objectives, and completing missions. So, I doubt those stormtroopers came alone. I'm unlocking the gates to the base grounds. Get everyone inside. We need to accelerate the evacuation. The door is now unlocked. When a hero is adjacent to the door, that hero can interact with the door to open it. When you do this, the door in the app... Um, select the door in the app and choose Interact. Objective update. Open the door. Alright, well... I'm not finished with my movement. I still have three points of movement left. So, one, two, three. Uh, 
so I will go with um, ah, and the respite kicked in for Shayla um, at the end of your activation if you are not next to an adjacent hostile figure you can recover one endurance um, now I'm assuming that Please do correct me, Ken Sevency, but I assume that the respite wouldn't actually proc if if I'm if I've got no endurance to recover, it wouldn't recover health. Shayla was never a hero that actually ever saw any play in my table. Uh, it was a, it was a, I bought the expansion and we never actually got around to playing with anything from that expansion. So, um, for the for at least for now, um, I will be activating Shayla again so she can move. One, two, three, and I will have use a second activation to activate the door. So. A gate leads to the rebel base, which is surrounded by a fence overgrown with vegetation. The rebel can interact with this door to open it. So, the gate opens onto the courtyard where an ancient stone structure stands as one of the last remnants of a civilization, of a civilization that has disappeared into the mists of history. So, um, let us move this back up a little. So, open the door, place tiles 2A and 38B, and one door. That is 15. Right, as 38B. Oh, and I have seen that piece we found it earlier Ooh, da, da, da. here it is right Yes, two way. One, two. A computer terminal stands next to the door leading into the base. Place one terminal and select the terminal to interact with it. Oop. Incoming, we've got a probe droid. We've got probe droids incoming. A probe droid comes hovering over the fence that surrounds the courtyard. Deploy a regular probe droid to the indicated space and assign it a color. Where are my probe droids at? Ha, huh, my probe droids. Boop. As we already have a black counter, we'll use the black counter again. Mm -hmm. 
Oop. We got enough. We have another probe droid. Um, deploy another. Uh, deploy a regular probe droid and assign that one a color. And we'll go blue for this one. Do I have another probe droid card? Have an elite probe droid. Yes, we do. Here's another probe droid. Now I'm going to switch those around. Because that one already has the black five sticker on it. <laughs> Blue. Note that the colored ring around each of the probe droid portraits on the right hand side of the screen. These rings help distinguish the two groups from each other. When you defeat one of the groups, make sure you defeat the correct group in the app. Uh, you can also mark your probe droid figures with the colored stickers provided in your Imperial Assault Core game to remind you of which color you selected in the app. Whenever I do the painting, I'll probably paint the bases different colors so I know which one is which. Get back to the base to help with the evacuation, Lieutenant Talcon orders. Complete the activations of the heroes who opened the door. Open the door to the base uh, using the terminal. Okay, so I had moved three spaces. So I still have two spaces left to move. Uh, one. Two. Right, because there are two probe droids on the map, make sure you to know which one is activating. The colored bar below the, probe, uh, the probe droid's portraits indicates which probe droid is activating. Like the stormtroopers, this probe droid wants to attack with its first activation. Unlike the stormtroopers, it isn't willing to just take the closest rebel as its target. It wants to attack the healthiest member of your squads. Let's see if it can. So. So. This is the best spot the probe droid, for the probe droid to attack from that it can reach within its two move instructions. So place the activated Dro uh, probe droid here, then determine if the probe droid can get in line of sight of the hero that has suffered the least damage. If two or more heroes are tied, break the tie in favor of attacking the hero that is closest. If it's still a tie, choose in co uh, as per the Imperial rule. So, ah, so yeah, you can kind of see on here though, it's a red dotted line signifies that you can see through that, but you can't pass through that um, droids like these um, probe droids however can move through red cover and also stop in it as well I believe so it goes there and it will try to be attacking um, Dahlia so it continue Alright, let's take a, um, a moment and talk about targeting priority. The double um, greater than and less than symbols indicates the um, priority target for the attack. When an Imperial figure is given some criteria to determine the attack, it will try to attack the target that best fits that criteria. If it cannot attack the target for any reason, it will instead choose from the targets that it can attack 
the one that best fits the criteria. Finally, if it cannot attack a target that fits the criteria, it will default to attacking the closest rebel figure. Assume the, uh, for a moment that the probe droid cannot get line of sight to the hero who has suffered the least damage. According to target priority, it will attack the hero that does have it does have line of sight to that has suffered the least damage. If it has line of sight to more than one hero with the same amount of damage, it will attack the closest hero that suffered the least damage. Using the targeting priority to perform the droid attack, remember that spending. Um, Remember, when spending Surge to skip any Surge abilities that would have no effect, finish the droid probe's activation now. Okay, so it attacks with a blue and two yellows, and it will be attacking Dahlia as she is the healthiest of the characters. Ooh. Oh, why do I pick up a black dice? Jesus Christ. That made no sense. Alright, okay, this is going to hurt. Ish. Okay, so... Recover. We'll ignore because it's not going to do anything. So, it will be... The plus one damage, and then plus one pierce. So, the pierce negates the dice, or the block, and we got three damage, four damage. Four damage done. So, three, no, oh, feck me, three, four. All right. Ah, then it move two to reposition three. Uh, it would move to there. Okay, so. Now then, the question then becomes, do we want to... Attack the droid? Or just go for the console? <laughs> hmm. Choices, choices. I mean, chat, feel free to shout up and see if you want to, uh, want me to attack or if you want me to just run for the, run for the base. I don't think I really want to um, open the doors when there's still units on the field. Don't want any. Don't want any of those dirty, dirty Imperials to get inside the Rebel base. You should surrender to your Imperial masters <laughs> and just end your torment. <laughs> oh dear me! No, no, we're out to win this. Alright, no, I'm gonna go for the attack. So I've got four speed. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, four, yeah. So, gonna activate one, two, three. Uh, 
Um, and I am going to attack this probe droid that hasn't moved yet. So it is a yellow and a green. And we are rolling a black dice. Nice, okay, so We rolled one defense, so it negates one damage I got one surge, so there's two damage and one surge And the surge, I am... What am I going to do? Am I going to do the stunned? Yeah, we're going to stun the probe droid. So now there's blue, it's been stunned. Um, and that is Dahlia's activation. So, you're getting uh, the hang of activating Imperial figures, so you uh, so you can do this one on your own. Remember that this probe droid may have different bonuses than the previous probe, uh, probe droid. From this probe droid's activation, if you have any questions, refer to the game log or the Legends of Alliance rulebook accessible through the main menu. Um, so, the rules of being stunned is that uh, you cannot attack or voluntary, uh, voluntarily exit your space. Uh, you use an action to discard this condition. Um, so we are going to uh, discard the stunned status effect. And it will still get its move action. Well, it's its top action, which is to um, move to and attack the closest healthy rebel. Uh, You'll go there. And this time it will attack Shayla, as she is now the most healthiest of the troop. So that was what, blue and two yellows. Oop, runaway dice. And Shayla rolls a black defense dice. Alright, well, the range was just about good enough. Um, we got two block... So that blocks two of the five damage coming Shayla's way. So that is another three damage. One, two, three. Um, and it can't reposition because of the stunned effect. All right, round three. So, let us try and kill this probe droid first. So, Shayla's going to attack first, and I am going to use the Mandalorian Whip, which allows me to push a small figure 
within three spaces or and push in line of three spaces away within line of sight. I can push that figure up to three spaces so it is adjacent to me. I then perform an attack with a weapon targeting that figure. And so that is a green to yellow. The droid gets its black dice for defense. It blocks two damage. So I will use that surge to add one damage to the count. So it has now got three damage on it. Um, I will then attack again, as the first one was a special ability that Shayla has. And this time we have two surges and three damage and two blocks. So we use the first surge for a damage, that's four damage. Um, it, would, it doesn't really matter about the pierce because the four, with four damage it does kill uh, that probe droid. That was the blue probe droid that we killed. Um, the end of the activation, there's no one nearby, so Shayla regains her um, her endurance. So, okay, so this probe droid, after the figure attacks, the defender suffers one stamina, one endurance damage, or stamina damage. Okay, so its attack is, or its first activation is to move to, to attack the closest, healthiest rebel. Uh, so we go one, two. Um, it is then meant to be the closest because it's got two valid targets. Um, we will just go, it will attack um, Dahlia. So two yellows and a blue, and Dahlia is going to be using a white for defense. Okay, so surge priority. So recover one or plus one damage when it's got no, it's taken no damage. So it will add one damage to the count. So it's doing three damage. Oh no, wait. It has not got a surge because that is the surge negation. So it has no surge. So it's just done two damage and one fatigue. And then it will move two to reposition three. Uh, so work, it can go one, two, two, one, two. Yeah, no, because I can't attack through that because it's a block, but you're still... Uh, I think its best location is actually out here. So, 
so it is now time for Dahlia. So she is going to move. One, two, three. And then apply the beat down upon this droid. Let us apply the one damage to this droid of droids. No. Take a five out of there, so we've got some spare here rather than me digging around. So one damage to the droid. And then we're going to end her activation right there. Um, she's going to activate right away again um, and this time I will use two stamina to remove the droids dice and defense dice <laughs> Oop, dice off the table please thank you okay so that's another three points of damage to it one, two, three. Um, and then I will be attacking again. I don't have the stamina because you cannot forcibly take stamina that would exceed your stamina limit or endurance limit. Oh no, I can. She has five endurance. So I will take another two points of endurance to remove that black dice again because I want to kill this thing. <laughs> Kind of glad I did. Um, stun and one extra damage, but it doesn't matter. It is lead dead. So that was my second activation. My second attack, so... We have killed you. You have activated. <laughs> and that means that it is Shayla's turn. And we go one, two for the move. And then we'll activate the console. So, this terminal controls the door to the base, but it appears to have been damaged by a probe droid blaster fire. It will have to be repaired before it can operate before you can operate the door. A hero can interact with the terminal to test mechanics to attempt to repair it. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, I think she uses a blue and a yellow dice to try and repair things. So they all have basically three different skills. There is um, your ability to punch things, uh, your ability to observe things, and your ability to basically interact with any kind of tech. And they all can roll different numbers of dice. So for Shayla, she rolls a uh, a blue and a yellow dice for the test. So uh, you attempt to repair the console, test um, the wrench, and enter the number of successes, which is the third icons below. We didn't get any. <laughs> Confirm. You close up the console and flip the switch. Uh, flip the door switch. The console sparks and goes dark. You need to keep working to make repairs. Uh, and that, unfortunately, is all I can do from there. Uh, but, but I do not have. Actually, I do have the rules, don't I? Which expansion was she introduced in? It wasn't Twin Shadows. I have a feeling 
it was probably Jabba's realm she was introduced in. See if there is a quick how to. It doesn't actually say. Um, so I'm going to use the Imperial rule and say that it doesn't. I will look up on the frequently asked questions between the streams and see what it says for Shayla. If her respite will recover health if there is no endurance to recover. Unless someone watching does already know um, whether that does or not. Um, but for now, the Imperial rule I will take and say no I can't recover health using respite. So, for now... Ah, thank you very much. I wasn't entirely sure, but thank you for confirming it for that for me, at the very least. Alright, so we've recovered one health, so she is now at three. Alright, round four. Um, so I think at the very least, for now, I'm going to rest once with Dahlia, so that she can get rid of all of the endurance, or this, uh, the strain that she has taken. So she now no longer has her five strain. And she will move for four. One, two, three, four. Um, I am going to have Shayla try and work on the console again. Uh, yep, we're going to interact. Let's see if we gain any surges this time around. We did, we gained one search. Confirm. Ah, it worked. You finish up the repairs, flick a switch on the panel, the door to the base begins to slide upward. Open the door and discard the terminal. Okay, so the door leads into a Dura steel enclosure hastily erected to extend the old stone structure that houses most of the base's occupants. An alarm is blaring throughout the base, ordering an emergency evacuation. Personnel are scurrying about the building, trying to move critical supplies to space transport. Place tiles 22B, 24B, and 36B. Alright, so, 36B looks like it's a double-ended. That's not a double-ended one. Those are all single-ended, okay. Thirty-six. That's ninety-five. One, two, thirty-nine, seventeen. Well, I, um, I don't think it's going to be much different. I think a lot of the rules around what the player characters can do will be the same. Um. Because it doesn't track and it doesn't tell you whether you can and can't do that. Because a lot of the stuff for the player characters you deal with on your own, you don't really input what's happened into the app. So I assume the same rules would apply if you're playing it on the table with Imperial players as you were if you were interacting with the app. Uh, 
Nope, nope. Mm. Nope, 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 nope. It's 36, isn't it? Might be the last one I pick up, isn't it? Or I didn't even pick it up. What the hell? Alright, put all these back. Oh! Okay. Not bad. I mean, that would be explain why it's got med packs down the bottom. Um. I mean, if that's the case, that's the case. It is all just learning. I. It should have probably explained that a little sooner, I think, maybe, but we will see. If it comes up and tells me something different later in this tutorial, then I'll go from there. But for now, like I said, like I said at the start of this, I am very rusty on the rules. Um. So I'm just going to be winging it most of the time. But still, thank you for pointing that out, anyway. Wait a minute, is that the dead end? I think that is a dead end, goddammit. <laughs> oh, I was looking you at You didn't screw yourself, Ronzi. Yeah, I was looking for the wrong freaking kind of piece. Yeah, no, definitely give it a try. I mean, listen, I the last time I played the um, game with friends was about three years ago. And because, like, a lot of it was... Because, like, the campaigns can are so, uh, uh, like, involved and run over a long time, it was rare for us to really bash... Uh, to, like, bring the game out because they want to play other games. We were also, like, running... Um, there was also a D&D &D campaign going on at the same time. So we had that to do. So, like, trying to fit this in while you're also running that, as well as other board games. There just wasn't enough time to do everything. So, the, like, the bringing this app out was just really helpful. Uh, and I'm looking for 22 and 24. Oh, look, there's 24. Uh, and we're looking for a longerish corridor. One. That's not the right type. That's not the right one either. Nope. Definitely not. No, that's all hoth. Nope. Nope. 
Oop. Oop. Huh. Interesting. I'm missing 22 still. I kind of wish that they would do for this, and they might do this in the, like, the main campaigns, but that they would tell you which pieces that you would need from the get-go, like they do in the, um, in the normal campaign. Or in the skirmishes. So at least then you can have them prepared and you're not, like, messing around looking for all these parts. Um... I don't really think that they envision people streaming it, but, you know, convenience. already gone fucking past it. Jesus Christ. Alright. Uh, so we want that piece added like that. Let's bring this down here. Uh, then this piece gets put there. And that piece gets put up there. Aha! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. I'm, I'm glad that I've got the... Um, I got the broken token organizer for the base game, but it doesn't organize any of the tiles. So my tiles are literally just a huge mess. <laughs> um, all right, so the structure is a mess of spare parts and supply crates. Place two crates now. Um, so we've got a supply crate here and a supply crate here. Uh, one crate stands out as a particular as particularly valuable because it marked is marked it is marked medical supplies, which are always critical. Um, level uh, it was critical levels for the rebellion. Place a red crate. Uh -huh. What the, but the Imperial forces have entered the base. They have penetrated the docking bay and are en route to your location. Just as you receive the lieutenant's transmission, several imposing figures come striding down the corridor leading to the docking bay. One of them wears a black cloak and wields a red lightsaber. The Imperials take blaster fire from behind which the cloaked figure deflects with ease. He motions towards you, and two of his guards start in your direction. While the Sith Lord takes the rest of the guards in the direction of the blaster fire. Deploy the regular Royal Guard group. Okay, so the Royal Guards rush you before you can react. The Royal Guard interrupts to perform an activation. Oh dear. This is not what I wanted to see. Boop, boop. Nope, uh, that's the wrong set of royal guards. There we go. So, these royal guards are coming for you. 
Luckily, they're far away and they are only carrying melee weapons. Let's see what they can will do during their activation. So, their first priority is to attack. Fortunately, even if they move four, they won't be able to attack anyone. That being the case, they will skip that instruction, including the move portion. Next, they will try to protect valuable Imperial figures by getting next to them to neutralize the, uh, to utilize the Guard's Protector ability. While a figure is instructed to engage something, it will try to get adjacent to the thing. In this case, the Royal Guards want to get adjacent to many as many non-Guardian uh, non Imperial forces as possible. And they will use the move keywords to do so. If a figure is instructed to engage something that it cannot get adjacent to with its movement points provided, it will skip that instruction. Since both Royal Guard figures are Guardians, they will not engage each other and there are no other Imperial figures within a move or within three moves of them. This means that the, instru the inst that instructions will be skipped as well. So, with their plans thwarted, they will just try to get into position to attack next round. Their instruction, the next instruction is to move three towards rebels, targeting the closest non-ready hero. They will move toward the closest hero that has no activations remaining this round. If there is no such hero, targeting priority dictates that they will move towards the closest rebel figure. After a guard has executed the three move instruction, it will go to the next instruction moving even closer to its target. Perform the activation for this royal guard group. Activate each figure in order of your choosing. Remember to complete one activation before beginning the next. friendly figure is defending you and you are adjacent to uh, to the targeted space apply plus one uh, block to the defense results limited one protector ability per use or per attack all right so anyway we're just going to be moving three then moving seven now we'll start with this one uh, one two three one two three four five ah hello sir <laughs> one two three four one two three four five hello sir um do you have time to speak about our lord and master <laughs> lord vader These guards are going to be a, a thorn in our side while we work on to evacuate the base. Take them out. Complete the activation of the hero that activated the door controls. Objective update. Defeat the royal guard group. They have eight health. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Alright, so I didn't move. I still have an attack. Uh, it is blue and yellow, and they get a red dice. But according to the rules that they just said, they don't activate their um, protector against themselves. All right, so that does nothing. Two defense, one damage, and one surge. 
because the two the, the one pierce won't get through it will still have no it's still have a damage so i either way it it does nothing i would need two surges to even have a, a chance to do any kind of damage um so no damage on that one Ending Shayla's activation right there. However, I still have more activations to do. <laughs> so. I am going to activate Shayla again, and I'm just going to just attack... Uh, attack, attack. <laughs> oop, 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 oop. We have Le Damage. So it's blocked two, um, but I've got two surges. So the Pierce one takes one block away, um, and the extra surge doesn't puts up an extra point of damage so two damage against one block it was one point of damage to that figurine um, and then I'm going to attack again um, and then that's just two damage and am I re am I doing Pierce wrong again? I know that you explained it before. Um, we still have two blocks. Pierce the cube of Pierce and blocks. If the number of blocks is less than. No, no, I am doing it right. I am doing it right. Um, in this case, they would have negated a surge, but no surges were rolled. So just two straight up damage goes through. So. It is Dahlia's activation. Um, and it is... Am I right? Am I even rolling the right fucking one? No, I'm not. Why would I roll a fucking blue? God damn it. It's greens and yellows. Get it right. Um. So yeah, I'm just going to attack with the staff once we're negating a surge but we have two surges so I'll put two damage onto this one we'll split the damage over them and then we'll attack again Ooh, two blocks. So increase one to get the plus one damage. Um, and I don't think I can apply stun with my second surge, because I think you have to do damage for any status effect to actually take place. Conditions, page 9. Um, K, 
Conditions are sometimes used as keywords. When an attack uses a condition, the keyword, the condition is applied using the following rules. The attack, the target of the attack must suffer one or more damage for it to apply. Yeah. I was correct in that, so I can't even stun it. Damn it. Alright, well, that there was a second activation. Okay, so we will attack again at the very least. Um, going to attack this figure. The one in front of Dahlia. Not Dahlia. Ooh, yay, okay. So. We have... Three surges, two damage, two blocks. So the two blocks negate the two damage. I'll use one surge to do a damage. And then I'll use the other surge to also stun it. So it is currently at three damage and stun. No, that's focused. Don't use focused. Quiet. Um. Okay, so it is at least stunned, so we'll put the stunned there in front of me. Um, then I will have her attack the one in front of Shyla. And I'll use two endurance at this point and remove its defense die from the defense pool. Nice. Okay, and it was, um... Ah, where was it? Fucking rolled. Did I roll Surgeon 2? I think I rolled Surgeon 2. We've done three damage and we've got a surge on the board. It's already at three damage. I'll stun that one as well. Oh, well, we, we know it's stunned. That's fine. I know it's stunned, because they're going to get their activation right away. So, it's another two points of damage, which would take it up to five damage. So, we'll just put a five damage token beside it. And it is also stunned. And that is Dahlia's activation. Alright, so... When the first figure in this group declares an attack, add one blue dice to its dice pool. Ouch! Okay. Okay. Um, move up to four and attack the healthiest rebel that has suffered the least damage. <laughs> so it'll be this dude. Um... And we'll attack it. It'll be attacking Shayla. So it already is a red and a yellow dice for its melee. Um, but it gets to add a one blue dice to its attack pool. And then Shayla has a black dice to defend with. I really should get like a dice tray or something. Oh my god, that hurts. 
That's a lot of damage. That's six damage, but I did block two. So that's still four damage coming my way. It puts me up there. But then if we just, yeah, we'll just replace five of this with a five token. Um. So then the next would be, well, the move to a non-guardian, but there is no other thing. So move three towards the nearest hero. It's not going to move because it's already closest to the nearest hero. Or the nearest non-ready hero. It's as close as it can be. Um, so then the next one, I mean this is pointless, he'll remove his stun. Oh no, he wouldn't be able to move anyway, he'd have to remove his stun effect first, then he would have attacked. Same with that one, remove its stun effect, then it would attack. Um, this one doesn't get a blue dice. And I change to a white dice. Because it is attacking Thyla. And we're taking another three points of damage. Okay, so now we have Shayla's turn. Oh no, we're not ending that. Yep, calm down. Um, so Shayla is just going to attack the um, Royal Guard in front of her with a green and a yellow. We get a black dice. Let's roll it over here. That really didn't do much more. So we have um, black dice with one block, two damage, and two surge. So we will apply plus one damage and plus one pierce, so we negate that. So it's three damage. Three onto the five is eight, killing the first unit. Now, when an adjacent friendly figure is defeated, you become focused. So, th this guy is now focused. <laughs> so, when you declare an attack or an attribute test, you add one green die to the dice pool. After you resolve an attack or attribute test, you must discard this card. Um, either way, Shayla is going to attack again on now that figure. It's still within melee range. Okay, so we've got two damage, one block, and a surge. So we'll apply plus one damage, so that's just an extra two damage. So this one is now at five, we'll replace that for a five counter. Um, that was her second attack, so we end the activation there. Um, I am going to need to take a quick break, so if you could just bear with me, I will be right back.
And I have returned. Sorry about that. I have to step away quickly. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. So where were we? Ah, yes. We were trying to beat down on this royal guard. We've got two activations left. <laughs> um, so... Let us go with Dahlia again. So I'm not going to use her precise strike. Probably should have. Um, plus one damage. The attack doesn't get through. Because the stun's not going to do anything. Um, this time I will use the precise strike to get rid of the defense dice. Uh, and we have done two damage and a stun. Uh, and so now we have Shayla, um, who again is a green and a yellow, and we have black for the defense. Wow. Okay, so that's fine. So, one surge for Pierce. And then one surge for damage is the one damage that takes it up to eight, killing it. Huzzah! Those there, because we are using these fairly often. Uh, and then we have defeated the Royal Guard. Taking down those guards was no small feat. You are well on your way to becoming capable soldiers. But this is a losing battle. Gather as many supplies as you can and load up on the transport for evac. We're leaving. We have an Imperial officer. Oh dear. Yeah, let's put that up there. It's out the way. So I can try and find an Imperial officer. Nope, you are a stormtrooper. Here we are, you're an Imperial officer. You go... There. And I need a regular Imperial officer. Alert all command. Why is another Imperial officer occupying the exact same space? <coughs> I mean, that's unhelpful. Actually, it's... No, that is not an Imperial officer.
You are. I'll put you there, because you, for some reason you can't be in the same space. Alert all commands. Oh. Now wait. An officer strides out the back of the jungle, barking orders of the enemy forces. Deploy an elite Imperial officer. Do I already have an elite imp officer? Not in this set. What about in this set? Yeah. You go over the back here. Alright, so. I'll send some help. To, uh, I'll send some help to cover you while you finish gathering supplies. Deploy the regular rebel troop group. Regular rebel troops. Do I have models for you guys? Probably somewhere. box though. Ah, oh, the fun of finding figurines. All of these friendlies should be... Or not. Interesting. don't have things for those. Interesting. I'll have to look and see. I'm, I, I was fairly certain I had models for these guys. I guess not. So, there should be some in here, though.
here we go one two three You have your first ally. Allies have um, can be activated at any time. It's the hero's turn to activate. Perform the ally's activation, then select the portrait on the left of the screen to complete its activation. If the last figure in an ally's group is defeated, inform the app by selecting the portrait and selecting the defeat button on the left side of the portrait. You can now resume the activation during which the royal guard was defeated. All right, so these guys kind of just fill out into here, like so. Shunt these guys up, <coughs> so they're at least on there. Um, okay, so we have movement. So we are going to move as far as we can. We're going to try and see if we can get. We should, let's go. Right, we can move five. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Uh, remember that the rebel trooper gets an activation each round if you have not already done so perform an action for the rebel trooper the next time it is the rebel's turn to activate okay so the Imperial officer pref um, officers prefer the uh, for others to do the fighting for them. To that end, this figure will attempt to order another Imperial figure to attack the rebels closest to itself. If there is no eligible figure that can attack that rebel, use the targeting priority to pick the next best target. If no Imperial figures can perform an attack, skip the instruction. This Imperial officer is the officer is the first figure to activate with the instruction preceded by a dot. This symbol indicates that the inst this instruction does not require an action, and so this instruction will always be performed if its conditions are met. Okay, so it has the ability of cower. If it is not within three spaces of a rebel, f of a rebel, recover three damage. Um, so it can. All its first action is to order um, another imperial figure with a figure cost of six or less attacks the healthiest rebel closest to this figure. So he is going to order this guy to attack. Order this guy to attack. Which is the blue guy. Um... Okay, its priority is plus two accuracy, focus, and then plus one damage. Um, and the closest, healthiest would be this dude right here. So it is going to. Right, so the troopers use a white dice for defense, and he uses a. Um, he 
he uses a uh, blue and a yellow. Oh yeah, that's that is ex super helpful. So we rolled the miss. Um, so the rebel trooper doesn't die because it only has three HP, and we rolled three damage. Um, so it's then then its next activation is going to be move three uh, to attack the rebel that has suffered the least damage. Uh, so what, one, two, three. It will have line of sight. So one, two, three. Um, and he again is blue and yellow. Oh. The white damage. Ooh, we once again are exceedingly lucky. The range is fine, but the Ugh. rebel trooper f seems to find a way to dodge again. <laughs> Finish. All right, so now it is the trooper's turn. Um, so we will start with this guy. And he will attack that Imperial officer. Um, we're all just rolling the same dice here. Blue, yellow. Um, so the trooper, if you have not exited your space during this activation, apply plus one damage and plus two accuracy to your attacks. And we get... What the f... Ah, two damage. <coughs> two surges it gives us plus one accuracy but we already had three plus the two is five um, and we also got pierce one which won't add anything um, so this dude has taken two damage um, I will then move him One, two, th three. Okay, so. Next, gonna have this one attack, and he is going to attack the same one. All right, so range is fine. Five and two is seven plus the two from sitting there. Um. we get plus one damage and we get well, that's three damage minus the one is two which is enough to kill this guy so that is fine
and that was the blue one. The blue officer has been defeated. Just turn that over. Um, and then he can move up to four. One. Two. Uh, one, two, three. Um, and then this guy, he is going to go. Uh, does he. Uh, from corner to corner? Yeah. So he's got line of sight on that dude. Um, it is kind of difficult to tell, but it's basically from this corner here in a str straight line to this corner. I think one thing that would have been good to add to this app is um, a line of sight measure. So while you can't, while it doesn't track where the units are, you can still use like a line of sight measure to see whether you would have line of sight. I think that would have been a good addition for the app. Um, either way, the final unit is going to attack the last uh, the imperial officer that hasn't done anything yet. And up oh, we had <coughs> four. It was what we're going one, two, three, four. Yep. Yeah. Um, but plus one damage, which is negated. Oh, we've got one surge negated. Um, but we've got one surge still there, which we'll place on Pierce. Pierce one. Um, and then, which means that the plus one damage does stick, so this guy has taken one damage. <coughs> so the Imperial Troopers, well these Rebel Troopers, are done. So. Bad man, bad man. Don't destroy the, the uh, Imperial Troopers. They're the good guys. <laughs> I mean, I, I would actually like it if they had done, um, like, a kind of ref, a flip for it as well. That there was um, a mode where you could play as the Imperial forces. It should be the base though, setting. Though, <laughs> though I think the raid mode might be that, but I can't play the raid mode because I don't have any of the parts for it. Uh... I'll eventually get them. Yeah. Anyway, before this activation, the highest cost Imperial figure that isn't already focused becomes focused. Okay, well, that means that the Imperial officer becomes focused. <laughs> I, I gotta bounce out, Ronzi. Ein, stop being Ein. <laughs> Alright, man. Take it easy. Enjoy being a dirty traitor. <laughs> Indeed. Catch you later. Yeah, catch you later, man. Take it easy. Um, right, so the elite Imperial um, so, uh, officer has become focused. So, order another fi Imperial figure with a cost of three or less to attack. <laughs> well... He can't do that because the Imperial Officer that's left is five. So, move three to attack the nearest rebel. One, two, one, two, three, three, 
three, three. Yeah, I'll go there. One, two, three. Attack the nearest rebel. Well, uh, we'll say he'll attack um, Dahlia. Blue and yellow, and a white dice for Dahlia's defense. So, the dodge negates the surge, the block blocks one damage, so one damage goes through on Dahlia. So we are at 10 damage on the card, but with the plus 10, she has 22 health. All right, so what's next? Next would be him to move two to reposition five. One, two, one, two, one, two. Now the furthest he can get away is there, I think, actually. One, two, one, two. Um, and cower if not within three spaces of a rebel. Well, he is within three spaces of that rebel. Right, so... Yeah. And yeah, one, two, one, two. Yeah, so he doesn't regain any HP, which is good. Finish. Round six. Okay, so um, let's have Dyla attack first. We'll move first, so she will move four. One, two, and I will have her attack the wounded soldier. Um, and it is a green and yellow with a white dice for the defense. Oh, and it evaded. God damn it. <laughs> um, she'll stay there. She won't move. Uh, will she? She's got two more movement. Where could she go? Know whether it's actually uh, any safer, really. So there is fine. So, before this activation, the highest two cost Imperial figures that aren't already focused become focused. Oh, well. That's helpful, isn't it? He's made his buddy focused. God damn it. Excuse me, my storage solution is coming apart. <laughs> Alright. So. Order another Imperial figure within six... So with a figure cost of six or less to attack, the healthiest closest uh, uh, the he healthiest rebel figure closest to this figure. Um, I think.
that would be this dude as he's got line of sight on it so that it doesn't his his targeting doesn't break um the map square that Dahlia is in So this dude is going to attack there, and he is focused. So it's um, blue and yellow. Um, when you declare an attack or an attribute test, add a green dice to the pool. Ouchie, ouchie, ouch. Um. Focused. Plus two accuracy. Well, he's already accurate. He's already focused. So he has plus one damage. So he's doing five damage. Yeah, that kills that figurine. that over there to one side. Um, ah, it's actually given. So he, he will move three to attack Dahlia. Right, you are no you are now no longer focused. So he will go there. And he will attack Dahlia. <gasps> He is also focused, so here comes the pain. <laughs> wow, okay. So we've got a block, we've got a counter, but he rolled one damage and three folk and three surges. So accuracy does not matter. He does an extra damage. And then he will stun. So... He does one damage. And Dahlia is now stunned. <laughs> he is now no longer focused, which is a good thing. Finish. Uh, let us go with the rebel troopers. Now you can't shoot through a friendly unit. Oh no, no, you can't. Can you shoot through a friendly unit? I think you can shoot through a friendly unit. You can't shoot through an enemy unit. If I am right. I will just consult my rule references. <laughs> Oh, wait, no. Line of sight cannot pass through non-targeted... Um. Through, uh, like, through non-targets, so I can't actually shoot through uh, an ally.
Alright, so yeah, we'll go with Rebel Troopers. Um, this guy. Move. One. Two. Yeah, I think so. It's probably one of the snipers. Uh, we got a yellow and blue, and then white for the officer. He's going to attack the elite. Officer. I think that's probably going to be a bad idea. But yeah, we'll attack the elite officer. Up, oh, he missed. Oh, he's moved. Tw he's only moved used two of his movement. Three, four, and he'll go back to hiding around the corner. Um, but this one will go one, two. We'll just stand with Dahlia, and he will do the same. One block, um, but we will use the surge to negate the block using pierce for the rebel troopers. So that's two damage. on this um, elite officer. So, before this activation, the highest cost Imperial figure that isn't already focused becomes focused. So... Our buddy, the elite Imperial officer, is now focused again. Um, well, he can't order anyone with three or less. So, he is going to move three to attack rebel troopers. Uh, one. Two. He is going to attack this rebel trooper. Blue and yellow with the white dice for the defense. Yeah, he's not focused. And that rebel trooper takes one damage. Um, he is then going to move to to reposition five. Um, we go one, two, that's probably the furthest that he's going to be away from everything. One, two. Uh, if not within three spaces of a rebel. One, two, three, no, he's within three spaces of a rebel, so he does not recover any health. Okay, so, it is going to be Shayla's turn. Um, we'll activate her move so she can move five, one, and then we're going to activate this crate. So, this is a crate of supplies. A hero can interact with this crate to claim the token. Claiming the crate may not provide you with a supply card, but it might give you some other kind of reward. You won't know what you will find until you claim the crates. Here I can interact with this crate to open it. Ah, you found foodstuffs. Getting these out of the base will save the Alliance credits. You gain 50 credits. You'll have the opportunity to spend these after the mission ends. So we'll take that. I put that on my card for the character. Um, and then... I've only moved one space, so I still have four movement. So we'll go... One, two, three... We'll go to here. So we can open up that one on the next activation. There 
enter. Okay, so. Um, Dyla will attack the Imperial officer standing in front of her. Um, it is a green and yellow attack, and he gets to try and dodge. He succeeds, that lucky little bastard. Um, so she's going to attack again. Hey, the dodges again. Man. Ah, oh, thank you. Anyway, Shayla will open this crate. Yep, same again. We won't know until we open it. Once if we until we open it. So, you found some useful supplies. Draw a supply card. Now I actually have to go and get the supply cards. Oh wait, no, those, these aren't supply cards, are they? No. Those cards are for skirmish. I need to check what card back supply cards have. So I'm going to consult this book quickly. Edition cards, command cards, reward cards. Supply cards have the supply crate icon on it. <laughs> that makes an amount of sense. Oh, alright, I already had these out, so I haven't actually shuffled these, so I will just shuffle these on stream. <laughs> and top card we got Adrenaline Stim. Discard this card during your activation to choose yourself or a adjacent friendly figure. The chosen figure recovers three stamina or three strain and becomes focused. Um, and then she will move and we'll just move by this. Supply crates. All right, round seven. Um, let's try again. Dyla will attack. Yellow, green, and white. That's better. <laughs> Um, so we will apply stun and plus one damage. Um, so that's two damage and he gets stunned. Oh wait, she was already stunned, not bad.
So she is now no longer stunned herself, and we'll apply the stun to that guy. That is something that I forgot to do last turn, but it, it didn't really make much of a difference. We'll just end her turn now. <laughs> there, there are going to be these things that I am going to miss, so I will, I'll deal with them as, um, as I remember and see them. Okay, so he goes. So before this activation, the highest two-cost imperial figure that aren't already focused becomes focused. So this dude is now focused. So order another imperial figure within uh, with a cost of six or less to attack the healthiest rebel figure. Um. Well, that can't happen because he cannot see anyone. Not without going through a friendly square, so we ignore that. So he will move three to attack the rebel troopers. He will attack this. He won't even need to move. So he will, will attack that rebel trooper in front of him. Yellow and blue, and the rebel trooper gets a white dice for defense. Oh, and he gets a green dice because he is focused. Okay, so... We have... That... That entire dice gets negated. <laughs> and that's negated. So we are left with one damage and two surges. Um, he doesn't need the accuracy, so he gets plus one damage, and he gets stun. That kills that figure. Pop you over there. Um, then he will move to to reposition five. Alright, he is no longer focused anymore. Oh no, he won't, because he was stunned as well. So he's not moving anywhere. God damn it, I really need to remember that I'm stunning people. <laughs> Alright, so finished. He's not recovering any health because he is standing right next to Dahlia. Um. So this rebel trooper is going to activate. One, two... He is then going to shoot this dude in the back. Um, and he's doing two damage to it, so he kills that guy. The Imperial officer is dead. Um, and he still has two movement. I'm just going to pop him there in front of Dahlia to try and soak up some damage. So, um... He's already focused, so that's fine. We can ignore that. We ignore that as there's no other figures. So move three to attack the closest healthy rebel. So he will move up here, and he will attack the dude in front of him. As it has taken no health damage. Uh, 
and utterly destroys him. So these rebel troopers are oh, as dead as a doornail. Yes. Um, and then he will move to to get out of her range. One, two. He is now no longer focused, though. Um, so, cower. If not within three spaces of a rebel, recover two. One, two. Yeah, he's out of range, so he recovers damage. Finish. Alright, so... Shayla will activate this. This crate is marked medical supplies. A hero can interact with this crate to claim the token. Claiming the token may provide, may not provide you with a supply card, but may give you some other kind of reward. You won't know what you find until you claim the crate. Good work. You collected a medical supply crate. You have gained your first med pack, as indicated in the bottom of the screen. Med packs are used for recovering health or recovering damage. You can find more med packs over the course of the mission by searching crates and maybe in other places as well. Med packs do not carry over between missions, so use them when you need them. So, when playing Star Wars Imperial Assault Legend of the Alliance, heroes do not recover life when they would recover more fatigue than they have on their hero sheets. So yeah, you were right, um, Kevin Se uh, Ken70. Thank you. Um, the extra recovery has no effect. This means no more recovering damage if you uh, when you take a rest action. If you have if you have recovered damage during the mission by resting, don't worry about it. Just play with this new rule from now on. Any abilities you have that allows you to recover damage specifically still works as normal. <laughs> so instead of recovering damage when you rest, you can now spend med packs to recover. A hero can spend a med pack when performing a rest action to recover 5 damage. An ally can spend an action during its activation to use a med pack to recover five damage. Use a med pack. Use a med to use a med pack. Select the med pack highlighted below. Med packs are in straw supply for the rebellion, so you better use them wisely. Uh, you need to achieve your goals quickly, or else you will find yourselves taking more damage than you can shake off. If a hero is wounded, or withdrawn. Select the hero portrait from the left side of the screen and select the defeat button on the left of the portraits. If any heroes have been defeated in this mission, defeat them in the app now. If all heroes are wounded in a mission, you will have to be extracted before you can accomplish your... Um, if all heroes are wounded in the mission, you will have to be extracted before you can accomplish your objective. And the Lion's High Command won't be happy about that. That's the last of it. Get to your ship. And may the Force be with you. Place a Rebel Mission token, uh, token indicated in the docking entrance. Docking bay entrance. When all heroes are on or adjacent to the docking bay entrance, select the token to end the mission. Objective. Move all heroes to the same or adjacent space as the Rebel Mission token. Okay. Please and thank you. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Right. Zoom out a little. Okay, so we are now continuing with this. Um, 
I think it's just time to retreat. That dude can have a uh, own the base by himself. So um, Shayla will move at a speed of five. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll end her turn. Um, she will then move again. One, two, three. Then we'll end her turn. Um, Dyla will then just run. <laughs> One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Round eight. Um, Dala will move. And as we are now all by this. Yes, we are. You, sp you sprint towards your ship with your arms full of supplies. When, you're la when the last of your team is aboard, the small freighter takes off and rockets out of the docking bay. Your ship comes alongside the medium transport Freedom Fighter, and the two ships leave Yavin 4's atmosphere, only to come face to face with an Imperial Star Destroyer. Fortunately, the Star Destroyer is already preoccupied hauling in another transport, allowing your ship and the Freedom Fighter to make their escape into hyperspace. This is the mission reward window. It shows how you, um, how much fame and how many credits you earned over the course of the mission, as well as bonuses for finishing the mission. At the bottom are items that the Rebel Alliance has allocated to your team as a reward for your service. Select outside of the mission reward window to close it. Okay, so... Veteran exercises, victory. Total credits, 500. Credits found, 50. Mission reward, 400. Victory bonus, 50. And we got those, and apparently we got a combat life as a reward. Which apparently is a tier three reward. I think that's that's a little better than just like it slowly ramping you up to um, rewards that it basically will just randomly allocate your allocate you a reward. Um, especially as like I mean the combat knife is kind of useful for either of Shayla, uh, Shayla or Shyla and Dyla. Combat visor. Combat knife. So it doesn't say what's on there, but it has um, stamina one. Exhaust this card during your activation to choose an adjacent hostile figure and roll one green die. That figure suffers damage equal to the damage results. So it's basically like um, it's a it's a free attack essentially because it doesn't actually um, cost an action during your activation. Um, the adrenal st um, adrenal stim uh, is discarded. Well, it goes back into the um, supply pile anyway, um, and we gain XP class cards. Well, XP class cards unlocked. One XP. So I assume I can either pick one of the 1 XP's, or I get all of the 1 XP ones. I hope it will explain.
You are well on your way to becoming Legends of the Alliance. Before you head out on your own, let's talk briefly about campaigns. We'll start you with um, we'll start with something fun: new gear. Select the armory button. All right, so this is the armory. Here you can spend the credits you have earned over the course of the campaign to buy new weapons and modifications for your current weapons. You can even trade in your current weapons at full value to purchase new ones. However, you cannot sell starting weapons in Legends of Alliance. You also cannot sell back items that are not weapons or modifications because those items are given to you for free. Um, the the armory will receive a new set of items after each mission, so be sure to check back in between missions. Note that the credits values printed on the item cards may differ from those in the app. Ignore the printed prices in this instance. Spend your credits, then select leave to return to the campaign map. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's see, so fiber knife. Oh, I I would have liked to have been able to see what they do. I might have to like find the items and s just read them. Hey! Hey, baked! Biscuit! Spud! Alicia, Shepe, thank you! Thanks for the raid, guys! How was your stream? Nice, nice. Hey, Lissa Blueberry. Did you get jump scared again, man? Well, did anyone get jump scared, I should say? <laughs> good, good. It's not a horror game if you don't get jump scared. So you kind of caught at an interesting time. We literally just finished the tutorial mission after nearly four hours. <laughs> and here I was hoping to actually do like the first um, campaign mission as well after this. Oh, how wrong I was. <laughs> ah. Stupid stuff is always good. Um, so what I'm currently doing now is I am looking through my um, reward cards essentially to see if I can find these so I can actually see what they are before I go and spend my hard earned money on something. Um, oh, right, there's a Vibra Blade. A vibra knife. Yeah, thanks. I'm hoping um, soon I will get. Um, I've got two more cameras on orders. That's the same as the one that I use for my face cam. So I'm going to be replacing this camera here because this one is showing up. It's like it's all like saturated with like pink. Um, and I'm going to be replacing it with the two other ones and have them kind of like looking down from each angle so I've got a, I can see a wider area of the desk because like you can see the map here but there's like a lot of other stuff over here that you can't really see that's um, like the character sheets and all of that so if I can able to view all of those then it'll be really helpful um, I think the extended heft was another one of the things I can buy 
Right, yeah. So that's all of the tier one items. Thank you very much for the dollar. That is greatly appreciated, Alyssa. Thank you very much. Um, Alright, so I'm looking for... This is reward two, so stun baton. And what was the other one? A high impact guard. And there's the stun baton. High impact guard. And then the last thing is the shock emitter. This is going to be a very, very interesting um, campaign. So I'm going to stick with the two characters that I've got now, which are Shayla Varad, who's the daughter of Mandalore, and Dyla... Pasil, who's the haunted exile. Thank you for the for um, for the follow, Ken Seventy. Thank you very much. Welcome to the family. Um, basically, yeah, both of those characters are melee characters, <laughs> so this is going to go well, especially if they're just going to offer me melee weapons <laughs> in the shop. That's <laughs> not going to go well. Uh, there are a lot of characters. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me just show. Hopefully, it doesn't screw up the cameras when I do this. Um, we all decide. Really? Are you gonna show me? There we go. So you can see there. There, there is a n a number of characters that I've got on this wheel. We just picked. I picked them at random. So. So this is um, a website called um, wheeldecide.com. Um, I'll send it to you over on Discord a bit later if you if you want to use it. But you could basically load up different things in there. So you can put in like different selections. You push the, you click the wheel, and it will spin the wheel for you, and it will pick what you want. <laughs> um, board game with app. Yep, there we go. We're back. Yeah, no, I'd definitely be down for it. <laughs> no, no, that would be cool. You never know, once lockdown is um, done, because this actually, although this is done via an app, I prefer the in-person one, because someone gets to play as the Imperials. And I absolutely love playing in, as the Imperials. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's it's really, really intuitive. I mean, you can go through this, but there is, like, a load of other um, things to learn. We can, like, there's a tutorial version where we can do, um, where you can ha have it set that you've not played them before. So, yeah, definitely we can try and sort something out. That would be awesome. Um, I'm not sure if there is a um, tabletop simulator version of this. <laughs> well, I mean, this will be up for, what, 60 days, I think, um, as a VOD. Um, but I will be uploading it to YouTube for my ar for archiving purposes. So it will always be up on YouTube as long as it's not demonetized and struck and taken down. <laughs> so shameless plug for those of you that are still here. Please do go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I, I am behind on that. I think I'm like in the middle of my... Um... 
<laughs> you're only seeing me at a wholesome time, Alicia. Trust me, there are times when I d not wholesome. Don't ever go and watch any of my um Halo, um any of my Halo, um any of my Halo Legendary runs. I I rage hard in some of those. Uh, sure. Hang on. That sh should work, I hope. Yeah. Yeah, that worked. I need to put the link into the, um, into the profile. I, uh, if, if, if you're, just, you're joining and subscribing, that means I need to start catching up and start releasing videos again over there. I, I've been slacking a lot, especially since, like, grinding Destinies. Like, on days off from here, I'm just playing Destiny, like, non-stop when I'm not working. <laughs> anyway, I need to get back. Let's get back to this and try and finish out this tutorial. Um... Alright, so I've got, what's this, three mods and three weapons. Extended heft, if a weapon has reach, gain pierce one. Otherwise reach, that could be interesting. Yeah, no, obviously, any support is always greatly appreciated, man. And there is no need to say sorry. Um, actually being able to interact, interacting with chat is probably the best thing to do. So, I mean, I, and I will just read off these cards, so I will just keep looking up at chat, so don't worry about distracting or anything. Um, though I will have to ask you to, um, you're gonna need to tell me what you use for your chat, because I know, I see that on your streams, your chat stays up on... Um, up on the stream. Mine obviously doesn't. Mine is like disappearing after a few seconds. So I'm going to have to speak to you later on Discord and see what you use so I can try and get that as well. Um, high Impact Guard. Exhaust this card while defending to apply plus one defense to your defense results. Surge plus two damage. That's interesting. And thank you, Shape and Alicia, for subscribing over on YouTube. It is greatly appreciated. Um, and the Shock Emitter. Exhaust this card while attacking to apply plus one damage to the attack results, and you get stun. On a surge. Well, the weapons that we have, we have... Um, stun Baton... It is a blue and black, blue and red dice. Yeah, have fun, Shepe. Go, do enjoy, do enjoy, Cod. Thank you for the luck. Lurking is always good as well. Alright, so, Stun Baton, Surge, choose an adjacent hostile figure, that figure becomes weakened. Okay, interesting. Alright, cool, cheers man. Do enjoy the rest of your evening with what's left of it. Uh, Vibro Knife, we get Bleed, plus one damage and two pierce. Um, or the Vibro Blade, which has bleed, plus one damage, and cleave two damage. Ooh, that would be nice. Vibro Blade, Vibro Blade. Vibro Blade is only 300 credits? Oh, 
Oh. Oh, that is a little tasty. I just want to double check on Cleave because if I remember correctly, we originally done it badly. <laughs> Where <were> we <laughs> this, this is hilarious. I had Darth Vader get absolutely destroyed in the first campaign that we played. Um one of my one of the rebel players was playing as um the Wookiee, uh Gar Khan. Um, and he was using cleave, and he had like weapons that had like cleave two or cleave three or something like that. And we originally thought that it would be, you can hit a figure with full damage, and you cleave through that figure and do full damage to the next figure. So he would run up to Vader, who was around stormtroopers, hit a stormtrooper. And cleave into Vader for full damage, and absolutely, absolutely destroyed him. As soon as, as soon as that started happening, I'm like, "There's something really wrong here. <laughs> he should, Vader should not be dying this easily." Uh, that's when we, that's when I checked. I look, I ended up looking online, and yeah, I, we were using, we were using cleave wrong. It's basically cleave is. You do damage to an adjacent figure with the number of damage for the cleave, not the uh, number of damage on the attack roll. So that cleave too would basically be, as long as you do one damage to another figure, another uh, another figure adjacent, another enemy figure adjacent to your, or within reach of your character. will have an extra will take two extra damage it, it's one of those weird it's one of those little mistakes that you make that you never forget and you will never make again <laughs> purely because of how ridiculous it is anyway we need to make a decision we need to make a decision you have 500 credits that we can spend. If I buy the Vibro Blade, that leaves me with 200 credits. That in negates the shock baton, negates the shock com the stun baton and the, the shock emitter. I can't get the high impact guard. I can get the extended heft. I can't even get the extended heft. I get the Vibro Knife and the Vibro Blade if I do that. Um, we got the shock emitter. That gives me plus one damage, and I can stun. What's the extended? How much is the extended heft? The extended heft is two seventy five. If I have that, I have two twenty five left. So I could buy both of those. Yeah, we'll buy the shock emitter and the extended heft. Because I've already got two melee weapons. We've got the combat knife for an extra point of damage. And both of those are uh, modifications that I can apply to the wep to the two weapons that I do already have. So yeah, we'll take the extended heft and the shock emitter. So we'll put those to one side and I'll put them back into their respective decks afterwards. Confirm. Confirm. Alright. Leave. So. Uh, the training screen records the class cards and reward cards that each hero has earned. Select the training screen now. Sorry, General Weiss, you need to move out the way. You're in the way of, um, the m buttons.
All right, so the training screen lists the cards earned for each hero. Uh, on the left side is the tracker. Uh, on the left side of the tracker is the list of the members in your squad. Selecting a hero's portrait will display the cards for the hero. Any cards listed on the training screen cannot be traded to another hero. On the right hand side of the tracker is the personal inventory. This lists the hero's starting weapon and any hero specific re reward cards the hero has earned. Reward cards can be used by any players um, used by any uh, that can be used by reward cards can be used by any players are instead listed in the inventory screen and can be assigned to any hero at the start of a mission. Oh, that's the other thing is that you will need to assign those cards to the player to the heroes whenever we go in, so we can't just freely use them. The middle section of the tracker lists the hero's class cards. Class cards are earned a bit differently in Legends of Alliance. <laughs> in Legends of Alliance, heroes do not earn XP. Instead, each hero earns one class card after each mission. After the first mission, heroes unlock their one XP class cards to choose from and each subsequent mission unlocks the next XP level of cards. Heroes with a blue icon next to their portrait are eligible to gain one or more class cards. For each of these heroes, select the hero portrait to see that hero's class cards. Glowing cards are available to be selected. Solid blue cards have already been selected. All other cards are locked. Uh, you can change heroes class card selections between missions by unselecting one of the class cards and choosing another card available. During a mission you can select available class cards for heroes who did not have their class card selected before the mission begins. However you cannot change class cards until the mission ends. At the start of each mission you can use the training screen to remind each player which class cards and reward cards that player has earned. Select a 1 XP class card for each hero, then select outside of the training screen to close it. Okay, so we're looking at Dahlia's first, so we have Force Adept and Force Throw are the cards that she can access. So, Force Adept. For one stamina, um, use while you or a friendly figure is performing an attack or an attribute test. That figure may reroll one dice. Exhaust this card when you perform a punch or a physical or mechanical test. Add one blue dice to your dice pool. Force Throw. Um, two stamina or two endurance exhaust this card during your activation to choose another small figure within three spaces and tests sight if you pass push that figure three spaces then if it is hostile it suffers one damage I think for tests you just need one success, I think. Test the attribute test phase seven. Uh, during the from the sum effects of the figure from the tests. I should probably just read it aloud, actually. During a campaign, some effects instruct figures to perform attribute tests. Uh, this is listed by placing the attribute icon in parentheses. For example, a mission may say a hero can interact with a terminal, range symbol, 
This means the hero interacts with the terminal as a test branch. To perform the test, the player rolls a dice listed on the hero sheet directly below, but directly below the attribute icon. If he rolls one or more surges, he passes the test. If he does not roll any surges, he fails. Okay, yeah, so I just need the one to pass. So there's nothing too punishing like, say, Arkham Horror. <laughs> <laughs> or any of the Arkham games. Any tests you do there are diabolical. Um, Alright, so it's... Do I want to be a support? Or do I want to do more damage and push things away? I don't really want to push things away because... We're, we need to get into melee range. We don't need to push things out of melee range. Uh, okay, yeah, I think you're right, and I think if it does require more than one, it will normally say that it requires two or more. If it doesn't, if it, I think if it doesn't have a number, it will just have um, the symbol there, and you'll only require one test. Like, for instance, um, so, uh, I'll show you, for there at the very least, I'm sure you've seen it, and it, that's completely out of focus anyway. But there is, there's no number beside it, so I assume that I only need one to pass that. Um, either way, still, Force Throw I don't want to take. I'm going to be taking Force Adept to increase odds and add. Like, re-rolls and adding dice is always good, especially if you're, um... Especially if I'm running, um, two melee characters <laughs> at this point. Um, okay, so we have all-out attack and responsiveness. So, responsiveness. Exhaust this card at the start of your activation to gain one movement point. Exhaust this card at the start of your activation to recover one strain. That's interesting. So you'd only be able to use... Because I'm only playing two, because I get two activations, I'd only be able to use this on one of the activations. Because um, you won't be able to unexhaust it. Anyway, all-out attack. Exhaust this card while attacking with a melee weapon to apply one damage and minus one surge to the attack results. Hmm. think, while the all-out attack is very, very tasty, the responsiveness is probably better here. The reason being, although I can, like, regain one um, fatigue at the end of the activation if I'm not next to an enemy, um... I can do that at the start of the activation, which can allow me to use the whip. If I'm uh, like at four, I can get it down to three. But also, the exhaust this card and gain one movement point is also helpful because that means I can at least move. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can move without actually having to use my movement. So I can move back into melee range. and knock some people down. So we're going to be taking responsiveness. Okay, so. The inventory screen contains all of the items and allies your squad has earned. Select the inventory screen now. So. These are the items your squad has earned over the course of the campaign. At the start of each mission, distribute these items among the heroes according to the rules for the cards in the rules reference guide. 
Um, above is the tab for allies. This tab lists all of the allies you have earned during the campaign. You have not earned any allies yet. Allies can be earned by completing missions and encounters. Note that when you earn an ally in Legends of Alliance, that ally will only be available for a certain number of missions, indicated below the ally on the ally tab. Uh, that number will count down each mission, whether or not you use the ally in that mission. When the number of missions remaining reaches zero, zero, the ally will no longer be available to use. Close the inventory screen by selecting outside of the tracker to learn about encounters. Okay, so the extended ha um, heft, I wanted to give to Dyla. Oh, I, I can't actually do that. Okay, so I can I can choose I can pick and choose as um, before each mission. That's good to know because I was going to give the combat knife and the shock emitter to Shyla, um, and then I was going to give the extender to Dyla so that she can like um, do pierce damage. Oh, well, the extended heft on Dyla, so she can do the pierce, because she's already got reach on the weapon. Shayla doesn't really need the extra reach, so giving her the shock emitter for the extra damage is always better, and then just giving her an extra chance to do, like, an extra point of... It's an extra damage with the combat knife. So... Encounters are short narratives that take place in between missions. Encounters appear on the map the same way missions do, except that they are indicated by an exclamation point icon. As with missions, selecting an encounter will open a description of that encounter. Begin the encounter shown on the campaign map. Ooh, okay. Deep space near Agmar. So, this corner of space offers a view of the frozen and rocky surface of Ag um, Agamar. In the early days of the rebellion, Captain Rex and the standard separatist droids joined forces to battle the Empire of the on the planet. Select the briefing. Meet the captain. Captain Darpik, commander of the commanding officer of the Rebel Transport Freedom Fighter, has requested a meeting. Your orders following the evacuation of Yavin Base are to escort Rebel Transport Freedom Fighter to an Alliance rendezvous. After several hyperspace jumps to throw off and throw the Empire off your trail, you meet the ship's commanding officer, Captain Darpik. Aboard the Freedom Fighter's makeshift command sensor. Captain Darpik is a pale skin Mon Calamari. I'm glad to have you along for the security, Darpik says after you introduce yourselves to her. We're not really outfitted for independent operations. I feel better knowing you'll be watching our backs. Yeah, well, Dyla was the first one that we ended up picking, I think. She's lead. Oh, well, I think it was actually Shayla, but we're happy to be of assistance. Our first order of business is to pick up some foodstuffs, Darpik says. We're carrying more passengers than usual, so we'll need extra supplies. I know a small port on Ord Mantel where we should be able to go undetected, but I have something other than a grocery run in mind for you. Commander Ginn is the senior Alliance uh, Alliance Army officer aboard, and he is taking a team to Ord Mantel to extract operatives whose location has been compromised. He could use your skills. Sounds like fun. Good. Darkhook responds with a grateful nod. I'll let you return to your ship to get ready. Com 
Commander Gin will meet you there in 20 minutes. May the Force be with you. <laughs> this concludes the tutorial. You are now prepared to embark on a full campaign. You can continue the, f um, continue the Fight of the Freedom Fighter campaign by playing the next encounter, the Smuggler's Sidestep. Or you can start a new campaign by returning to the main menu. Either way, you have just begun your journey to become Legends of the Alliance. I mean, it's... It's not actually... Um... Begin the shark... Well, it's not here. Unless I uh, do it from in here. Ah, okay, so I do it from in here. But... Thank you very much. I mean... That we've gone on for a little while. It's gone on for four hours. Um, I was hope. Like I said I was hoping to get through that and then get on to doing the first mission, or at least starting it. I mean, I could, and I could come back tomorrow, but I think I'd rather wait. We'll do try and do a mission, a session. So the next session will it be next Friday, more than likely. Um, so. Um, of course, tomorrow is going to be a Destiny 2 raid. Um, we are going to be attempting to do, um, the Scourge of the Past, uh, before that leaves in a couple of weeks. Um, so if you are able to, please do come and join us for that and watch us, uh, learn and fail and learn and fail again. Um none of the people that I'm that we're that I'm raiding with have actually done it a couple of them have looked up videos and start and such so we kind of know some of the encounters that are coming up but most of us are going in blind um, that will be starting at around <gasps> excuse me 8 p.m. GMT again um, so if you can join then that would be great um, as I said at the beginning of the stream, thanks to all of your support, I am now eligible for the Affiliates Program. Um, I do need to jump through a bit more hoops before that is active. Um, and of course, once that is, once I've activated that and it's all official and all of that, I will be starting to look at doing the painting streams. And at that point, we will go back to the Wheel Decides and we will pick which one of my board games I will be doing a painting streams of first. Um, I hope to god it's not this one because there are a lot of models to paint. Um, so if it does come down to this one what I might do is we may do it down as um, on an expansion by expansion or a box by box basis. Um, or uh, like a couple of models by models basis, like squads, like we'll do stormtroopers, we could do the royal guards, such like, or stuff like that. Um, so we, we, will find, we will find a way to work that in if it's this one. Um, but I've got other ones that I can paint. I've also got little metal models that I can make. So those will just be like celebratory streams that we'll do, like as a one-off, we'll do them every so often. And every time we hit another milestone, we'll do the same. Um, so, I don't know whether it will be in addition to my normal regular streams that I'll, we do, um, or if it, would, um, if it will be additional ones to that, or if it will just replace one of those for an evening where we do that. Um, we will see. I still to work, I'll, I've got to work that out and decide that. Um, but, Thank you very much for watching. Um, please do consider giving a follow here. Um, if you are watching this post on Twitch, thank you very much. If you can try, if you can make it to a live session, that is that would be fantastic. Um, 
viewer interaction is always great, especially for games like this where I'm literally just looking down at the board and I can easily look at the chat. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much. Um, please do consider giving a subscribe, um, a like, um, a constructive comment is always greatly appreciated. Uh, better yet, if you can come over here, uh, follow, come watch live, even that that there would be fantastic. I will come to and watch you live. <laughs> Not that kind of live, Davis, and hello. <laughs> <laughs> you joined right at the end. <laughs> how, how long have you been lurking there? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you creepy <laughs> bastard. <laughs> um anyway but no once again thank you very much you coming here is always greatly appreciated um damn straight it is i'm beautiful <laughs> until next time <laughs> let me mute him first while i can finish this so, until next time, please stay safe. <laughs>